In this video, we're going to talk about finding volume in a surface area. So this section takes a look at three-dimensional shapes. The three dimensions we generally refer to are length, width, and height. When we discuss shapes involving circles, we will include the radius in the formula. There are two types of calculations that we will consider for these shapes. Volume and surface area. Volume measures the amount of space inside the shape. Surface area refers to the area needed to make the shape. Let's start with a cube. A cube is a square box. That means all of the sides have the same length s. To find the volume of the cube, we find the value of the side multiplied together, which means I have side, 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 so length, width, and height. So our volume could be expressed as the side cubed, or if you want to do like a length, width, height, that works too. So let's look at the example of a cube that has sides that are 2 centimeters on each side. The volume would be 2 centimeters cubed, so 2 cubed would be 8, and now centimeter, centimeter, centimeter will be centimeter cubed. So pay attention to, again, the units that show us dimension. Remember, perimeter, or if we're talking circumference, will be in the unit we start in. Anything in area will be squared, and then anything in a volume will be cubed. So let's try it again. I just switched the cube. This time, um, all the sides are 5 foot. <clears throat> when I go to find the volume, I have 5 cubed is 125 feet cubed. Let's talk about surface area. So surface area says if we had to build this box, how much material would we need? So look at this picture where I showed you there are six sides to a box. Um, I have a top, I have the front, I have the left, I have the bottom, I have the back, and I have the right. So because there's six of them, and we know each of those top, bottom, front, back, left, right um, are all squares, I have six squares. So a square, the side would be squared, so that's s squared, and then times 6. So I'd like you to see construction of how did this come up. Instead of having to like figure out just one more formula to memorize, you can think, hey, I know how to find the area of a square, and then I can count how many squares I have. So if you were to forget something, you could bring it back in your head. All right, so let's go back to the boxes we had. The first box I had was 2 centimeter on each side. So I have 6 to represent the six faces of the cube, and then times 2 squared. So 2 squared would be 4, 4 times 6 is 24, and we're back into area. I don't care that it's now called surface area. Surface area is an area, so an area will always be squared. Same thing when I go back to that cube that had um, lengths of 5 feet. I'm going to have 6 times 5 squared. So 5 squared, 25, 25 times 6, 150, and now it's feet squared. So let's look at this. Um, we need a square tank to hold 27 cubic feet of water. What should the dimensions of the tank be? Okay, so this time I know what the volume is. The volume is supposed to be 27 cubic feet. I know the formula for volume is S cubed if I'm trying to make a cubical tank. So I would take the cube root of 27, which would be 3. Okay, let's switch over to a rectangle. So to find the volume of a rectangular box, we want to multiply the length, the width, and the height. Um, so let's say I had this rectangular box with dimensions 4, 12, and 3. To get the volume, I would do 4 times 12 times 3 gives me 144. Um, notice the top and the bottom of boxes are the same. Notice the front and the back are the same, and then the two ends are the same. That is why when we do these calculations, you're going to see two in front of each set of calculations. So here my surface area is twice the length times the width, twice the width times the height, and twice the length times the height. So let's give that a try. The surface area for this box that's 10 centimeters by 8 centimeters by 12, I have 2 times 10 times 8 plus 2 times 8 times 12 plus 2 times 10 times 12. Okay. All of that goes in my calculator. If you need the little steps in between, that's fine. I ended up with 592 square centimeters. I know this gets to be a lot of calculations to keep track of. It's important that you take good notes when you're doing this. Pay attention to what you're hitting. 
I also think, don't get messed up with the order. You're doing combinations. I need to make sure I do 10 and 8 together. I need to do 10 and 12 together. I need to do 8 and 12 together. So you make sure you do each set of twos, right? That's what I'm looking for here. And then they happen twice. Let me also reassure you that surface area is in your homework. It is not on the test, right? When we look up objectives of what we have to do, I have to do volume that's required. Surface area, I cannot separate from the homework. So it's in the homework. I think it's a good thing to know. I think it's an important concept, but it won't show up on the test. So when you feel overwhelmed at look at all these things I have to memorize, you don't have to memorize surface area. So that should make you feel a little bit better. But do know you have to do it for the homework, but you can look at the formulas for that. Okay. Let's stick with this. Now let's go back to volume, which you do have to know how to do. Um, and let's find the volume of this box. So to find the volume, I'm just going to multiply all the sides together. So 10 by 8 by 12, that gives me 960. Remember, it's centimeters cubed because we're talking volume. So, love to do application. Cute application to me is tiny houses. I'm thinking you've seen them on TV. You might have seen them on the road. HCC had a tiny home exposition about a year ago, and we had them on campus, which was awesome. I was teaching in class, and out the window, there the tiny homes are showing up. So um, one of the ways they make tiny homes are by using metal crates. So the same kind of metal crates that they drag behind a semi, then they turn into houses later, which is kind of cool. So I thought this would be a good example because it's rectangular. It's an easy shape to deal with. So let's look at how much space is inside the crate, um, the volume and how much metal it takes to make the crate, which is the surface area. So the volume would be like, what's your living space? How much room do you have? And the surface area means we got to buy this stuff. How much is going to cost us to, to make this crate? All right, so um, here I got this online because what do I know about dimensions of a crate? Um, so I know, go find them. So there's interior and exterior dimensions that they gave, which I thought was interesting. So exterior, 20 feet, 8 feet, and 8 feet, 6 inches, which is 8.5 feet. And then interior, 19.5. Um, this is 7 feet, 8 and 1 quart, um, one eighth inch, sorry. And this is 7 feet, 9 and 5 eight inches. So pretty exact measurements there. I like this because it makes us do math that you probably haven't did, had to do in a while. So that's cool too. Um, so we're starting with volume. Volume means inside, which means I want to look at these interior measurements. Let me circle them for you to say, um, oops, it didn't come up. There we go. So I am looking at these measurements. And you can see the first thing I did over here is I need to convert them. I don't want to have 19 feet, 5 inches. I want to have how many feet is it? Um, so I took this 19.5 and I turned it into how many feet? How did I do that? I divided 5 by 12. It gave me 0.41666, so I turned it into 0.42. So this is um, my 19.42 inches. Okay, then this 7 um, foot 8 and 1 eighth inches, a little bit more. I did 1 divided by 8. It gave me 0.125. I added 8 to that. Now I have 8.125. Let me write that for you. 8.125. Okay, I divided that by 12. And that gave me the 0.667, which is where I got the 0.68 from. So now I have 7.68 feet. And then I did the same one down here. So I started with 5 divided by 8 is 0.65. I added 9. This is 9.65. So 9.625. I divide that by 12. There's my 0.8, which is what gave me this number right here. All right, now we have some dimensions we can talk about. Oh, I kind of wrote on top of that, so let's erase all ink on this slide. Um, so if you want this shot of what did I do, here's how I put it in the calculator, type down instead of me writing it. All right, so now we know what my dimensions are. <clears throat> let's go back and do the volume. Okay. The volume, I take my 19.42, my 7.68, my 7.8, and it says I have 1,163.3 square feet, or cubical feet, right? So this is the volume inside. Don't get that confused with area, because when we talk about houses, we should talk about area. This, um, I'm giving you volume, so this is like how much space you would have to heat or cool or whatever you have to do in this um, tiny house. Okay, so there's my volume. 
Then surface area. Surface area says how much metal is in this thing. That makes a difference because the more surface area you have, the more weight it's going to be, and then the stronger truck you're going to have to have to pull it. Um, so, or the more it's going to cost too. So this one, remember when I'm doing surface area, I go, I have sides that are the same. So I have the 20 by 8.6 and I have that twice. I have the 8 by 8.6 and I have that twice. And then I have 20 um, times 8 and I have that twice. So here are all my things written out. So I have 2 times 20 times 8 and I have 2 times 8 times 8.6. That should be really, oh, 8.5. So let's say what this is, 8 foot um, 6 inches. This is 8.5 feet. So you're like, what did she do? I changed this one also from inches to feet. Um, and then I have 2 times 20 times 8.5. That gave me 796 square feet. So just to be aware of the conversions that I'm doing all along, this one only required one. All right. um, let's change our shape, and now we're going to talk about a cylinder. So this is the volume of a right circular cylinder. The right just means it's standing straight up. There's no slant to it. So um, just think a regular can. Um, the easiest way to think about the volume is to look at the area of the base. So do you see this is a circle? And we already said circles are pi r squared. So the new introduction is we have this h, so you just have to multiply by that. And I think that's a good way to think about volume in general, is it just does take the base and multiply by the height. So it's not a whole new set of formulas you have to learn. It's just recognize what basic shape you're dealing with and multiply it by the height. Okay, so here's one. I kind of kicked it over, but that's okay. Um, I have a radius of 4. I have a height of 12. And if I want to find the volume, it's going to be pi the radius 4 squared, and then times the height of 12, which is 603.19 cubic centimeters. To find the surface area of the cylinder, we can look at um, what the cylinder is made of. So we're going to start at the top and the bottom. So the top and the bottom, do you see how they're circles? This means that we have 2, so the 2 is for the top and the bottom, and pi r squared is for the area of the circle. All right. The middle part of the circle, if you cut it, like here, and you laid it open, it would form a rectangle. So if I cut this here and rolled it out, it would be like this. This would be the height. But this would be how far around is the circle, which is our circumference, which is 2 pi and r. So here's a rectangle, height times the width, so 2 pi r h. That tells me this middle part. So I have the 2 pi r squared from the top and the bottom. I have the 2 pi r h from the middle part of the cylinder. Okay. So now when I'm doing the surface area of that previous example I had, that was the 4 by 12, I have 2 times pi times the radius squared, and then 2 times pi times the radius times the height. Again, put all this in your calculator. Use the parentheses, just like I'm using parentheses parentheses, and I got 402.12 centimeters squared. There's that picture just to bring back what we were doing. Okay, so I want you to try. So here's just another cylinder. I gave you a diameter of 10 inches. I gave you a height of 6 inches, and I want you to do both. I want you to do the volume and the surface area. Pause me. It should take you a couple minutes. If you need to flip back through, you should have been taking notes so you have both of these formulas that you're supposed to have, and then check your answers. Okay, so let's start with, now that we're checking our answers, I gave you the diameter. It's not what you want. You want the radius. So divide by 10 and you get 5. To find the volume, which volume is the easier of the two, I have pi r squared h. So I have pi, the radius is 5, I square it, I multiply it by the height, which is 6. I get 471.24 cubic inches. Okay, surface area. Remember, I start with 2 pi r squared, so 2 pi 5 squared, then 2 pi r h, so 2 pi 5 and 6. Um, that gave me 345.58 inches squared. Hopefully you got those right. All right, so let's talk about some applications. 
Many, many items are packaged in cylinders. Think about it. Soda, water, canned food. A lot of things that you buy and purchase, especially if they're liquid, come in cylinders. And if you ever notice, these cylinders are tall. Think about the size of your water bottle. It's tall. It's not big around. It's tall. Think of Red Bull. It's tall and skinny. It's not short. Right? So I want you to think about this of why is it tall. And it's because when you look at formulas, Especially for surface area, that tells me how I'm going to make this can, how much aluminum, let's say if it's a soda can, I'm going to use. H only appears once when I look at the formula. So my formula for surface area, I know this is really ugly when I write it this way, but it'll do, was 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. So here I have, oops. The radius squared. Here I have the radius another time, but h only appears once. So having a tall height and a smaller radius allows companies to spend less money when they produce cans. I think that's important to think of who's using this and why do we care about geometry? We care about geometry because geometry is money and everything, everybody cares about money. All right, <clears throat> sometimes geometry can kind of deceive the eye. So I thought it'd be important to just show you. Be careful. Um, sometimes when things are drawn taller, you're like, taller is bigger, taller is better. I got more stuff. And you didn't. So I wanted to show you this um, <clears throat> lawsuit. It says, fancy Boise Arena because large beer is the same size as a regular beer. Um, and you could go look that up on YouTube if you want to. But I thought it was really interesting to see. And down here you can see it says, a large beer was $7. A small beer is $4. And it didn't take too long for somebody to be like, how much more beer did I get? And they took a small beer and they poured it into the cup from a large beer and they found out I just paid um, $7 for a $4 beer, um, which means a lawsuit. That didn't singularly happen in Boise. So just to say like, oh, Boise's not bad. Um, this was happening a lot of places. Um, so that changed. And a lot of times it is the consumer having to kind of yell out, here's what's going on. So it's, um, I thought cute, good application of where math is used and um, is helpful. All right. So let's continue on in our shapes when we're looking at three dimensionals. And I want to show you cones and pyramids. And I put them together because they have this similarity that they go to a point. Okay. So this point, anytime that point happens, when I come to find the volume, you need to multiply by a third. So there's kind of this generic idea that the volume of cone in a pyramid is one third times um, the base times the height. Now this base means whatever the area of the base is. So if the base is a circle, then it's going to be pi r squared. If the base is a square, it's going to be side squared. If the base is a rectangle, it'll be length times width. So just kind of pay attention that I have three things going on here. A third pi r squared h, a third base times height, a third length times width times height. But it's just a third, the area of the base, times the height. So it makes it easier to remember if you go a point means I use a third. Um, let's take some just easy examples. So here's a cone. Um, it has an 8 millimeter diameter. It has a 10 millimeter height. And I want to find the volume. So volume says i got to do a third. Um, my area of the base, the base is a circle, so I want to do pi r squared. Well, the r is not 8, the r is 4. It's half of that. So I have 1 third pi, my 4 squared, and then times the height of 10, gave me 167.55 millimeters cubed. Let's do the same thing with a pyramid. This pyramid has a square base. It's 8 by 8. <clears throat> it has a height of 9. So I have 1 third, the base, 8 times 8, and the height is 9. When I multiply that together, I got 192 centimeters, um, not squared, cubed. That means I was just lazy when I was typing that in. Sorry about that. So we caught it. Um, so let's give you a U try. I thought that was a cute little tent. The height is 6, the width is 60 inches, and the length is 80 inches. I want you to give me the answer in cubic feet, so I will wave the red flag right now and say, are you paying attention? This says feet, this says inches. So before you start working it out, make sure you do the conversion. So go ahead and give that one a try, figure out the volume of this tent, and then come back and check your answer. All right. So let's start with the fact that I need to do some conversion. So the height was awesome. It was in feet already. The width was 60. So I do 60 divided by 12. That's 5 feet. 
12 inches in a foot, so that's what I'm dividing by 12. And then 80 divided by 12 gave me 6.67. Okay, this goes to a point. Anything that goes to a point, I know I need to use one third with it. So I have one third of six times five times 6.67. Um, I threw that in my calculator, so I said 6 times 5 times 6.67, um, and then times the one-third, and it said it was 66.7 cubic feet. Okay. Um, so here's another you try. This one's a combination, which I liked, and hey, we're back to beer. I feel like it's a theme of this one. So this one looked that I have two things going on. I have a silo. The silo is made of a cylinder and a cone, which I love. That way we have two things going on. I want to see how much how much beer can you put in there. So there's lots. If you're interested in beer, there's lots to read about how crazy this is of all these things you have to do for room and for volume and for room for it to ferment and whatever. So you could go look that up. But um, and actually for how big can this thing be to come down a regular road or do you have to bring a crane in? I thought all really cool stuff to look at. Um, so all you need to know on this one is the diameter of the silo is 12 feet. The height of the silo is um, 20 feet, but I separated it. So you can see the first eight feet is for the cone at the bottom and then the second 12 feet is for the cylinder on top. So try putting this together, see if you can figure out how much volume is in this shape. Then come back and check and see what we did. All right, so I'm back. Um, so here's my two shapes put together. The total volume is the sum of the cone and the cylinder. So the cone was one third pi. I'm doing r squared, so I said it was, um, if you go back, I said it was 12 foot across. So I did the 12 divided by two is six, and then the height of that cone was eight. And then the volume of the cylinder, was um, pi r squared, which my r was six again, and then my height there on the um, cylinder on top was 12. So I put all of this together into my calculator and it said 1,658.76 cubic feet of beer. All right, <clears throat> so this should be our last shape in this video. Um, and it is a sphere, so just think like a ball. And I hope you've realized when I did the cone and the pyramid, I have gotten rid of surface area. And same thing with um, for the sphere, I've gotten rid of surface area. We're just looking at volume here. So the sphere really only has one length going on there, and that's the radius. And it's just going to go in every direction now that it possibly can. So instead of having that third, which is smaller, this has four thirds because it's bigger. It goes all over the place. So I have four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so here's my volume. And then I gave you a, um, a sphere, and it has a radius of 14. So we're going to do 4 thirds times pi times 14 centimeters cubed. It gives me 11,494.04 cubic centimeters. All right. So last example, um, golf balls. So I'm always looking for application what's going on. So golf balls come in two basic varieties, um, two piece or three piece. So the picture on the right, if you can see that, is three pieces. So you see there's this like really hard, solid center rubber middle. And then there's this outer covering that I, um, let's see if I say that right. So there's the solid center. There's this rubber middle, which is kind of like a big rubber band, just loop, 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 looped around. And then there's this outside with all the little dimples on it. Um, so if the golf ball on the left, right, because it seems like I flipped that a little, sorry about that, um, has an overall diameter of 1.68 inches, and the inner ball is 1.53 inches, what percent of the ball is made of rubber? And the rubber is a big deal, right? That's what's going to give it. It's like the, you hit it and it goes out and stuff. Um, I don't golf, but I got a little idea of the um, little bit of physics behind it. So let's just figure out what percent of this ball is rubber by knowing that overall diameter is 1.68 and then diameter inside of that little inside ball is 1.53. Okay, so we're going to take a few steps to answer this. So we're going to start by finding the overall volume of the golf ball. Um, and the diameter being 1.68 says the radius is 0.84. So I can look at what's the volume. So I take 4 thirds pi and then that radius cubed and it says 2.48 cubic inches. Okay, so here's the volume of the ball. That's the overall ball. Now let's look at inside. <clears throat> inside I have this smaller 
um, 1.53 inch radius. I divide by that two, by two, it gives me 0.675. Okay, so this 0.765, I might have said that backwards earlier. I take 4 thirds pi times 0.765 inches cubed, throw that on my calculator, it gave me 1.88 inches. Right. So do you see, I'm looking at this difference between the two. This is my overall golf ball. This is that inside golf ball. So here you can see all I did was subtract the two and it says 0 0.60 centimeters cubed. This would be the rubber, right? That's this part in the middle. This is, <clears throat> it takes me a while to write with this thing, 0 0.6. Okay, so I said what percent? So 0.6 is the part that's the rubber. 2.48 was the part that was the overall volume, so it says 0.24, which is 24%. I think interesting. All right, so that's the end of this video. I hope you